We're back on the Building Equity Podcast. I'm James Schlimmer. And I'm John Bowens. I tell you what, John Bowens, today we're talking about how to inspect a property before buying and the most common mistakes to avoid for new real estate investors. We're talking all things inspections, and I've landed the interview of a lifetime with the CEO founder of Inspectify.com. What do you think about that, John Bowens? Let's get into it. This is uh, out of all of the episodes that we have. Um, I'm actually most excited about this one. And I, I know it sounds sort of odd for our viewers to think what could be exciting about an inspection, but ultimately, let's face it, an inspection can make or break your cash on cash return on investment. Without right? question, without question. And it, it can also make or break principal loss on an investment. So it's a really important part of the real estate investment process. It's one of the first components of looking at a transaction and determining its viability. So I'm really excited and uh, let's jump right into it. I tell you what, I can see the excitement all over your face, but I'm gonna stop you there because you know what'll make or break this friendship? What's that? If we don't do our disclaimer. So listen, we're not giving you any financial advice. We're not giving you any investment advice. And uh, John Bowens, what are we doing? We're giving information and education there you go. And by the way, all of this in this amazing episode is brought to you by IRA Title Pro. So if you're using your self-directed IRA to buy and sell real estate, John, is anybody doing that throughout the country? Not that I know of. You liar. You know that's happening thousands of times that folks are doing that. Self-directed IRA real estate just... As in, as in with a title company that understands self-directed IRAs. No, I'm the talking. only one that I know that exists is IRA Title Pro. IRA Title Pro is the best at that. But I'm just saying in general, there's a lot of investors who are using their self-directed IRA to buy and sell real estate. Hundreds of thousands. And they need to know about IRA Title Pro. So they can head over to IRAtitlepro.com. They can close on average 11 days faster, work with an experienced closing team that understands IRA transfers. And you know what else, John Bowens? What else? They can head over to the resources tab and they can see all the tools and resources that were built especially for them to help them at every step of their journey, whether they're buying, selling, or lending. And with that, I think we got to bring in Josh Jensen from Inspectify. What do you say? Yep. Let's jump in. Awesome. We're <laughs> back here on the Building Equity Podcast. And John Bowens, there's one thing that I'm excited about, and it's kind of the innovation of the real estate transaction, the journey. And one of the biggest sticking points one of the most questions that we get from whether it's real estate investors or mom and pop folks is, how do I handle my property inspection? Where do I find an inspector? What inspections do I need to order? And here's a true story. I'm out at Inman in Vegas, which is kind of this you know, real estate conference. And I see this booth. It says inspectify.com. Awesome name, by the way. And I walk up there and I find out that this company, Inspectify, is revolutionizing the home inspection process for any type of residential purchase, right? And come to find out, I'm thinking about, man, this is awesome for real estate investors. This is awesome for Zillow. This is awesome for just anybody what uh, this company is trying to do. So I'm thinking, who runs this thing? Who founded this company and why do they kind of want to tackle the most arbitrary vanilla process, which is the property inspection? And it's a gentleman by the name of Josh Jensen. And guess what? He's on the show with us. He today. is live on the show right now. So let's introduce him. Josh, thank you so much for joining us, man. Absolutely. Thanks so much for having me. Excited. So I got to ask, how did you start this journey to go after property inspections? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, my background. I started in engineering, uh, not software engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, actually designing diesel engines for Caterpillar. Um, but really the impetus from Inspectify came from a side hustle that my wife and I've had for the past 10, 10 years uh, doing real estate investing. Um, sounds like a lot of folks uh, on, the, on this podcast. So, um, you know, over the last 10 years, we've bought and sold over 50 homes and have gone through the process of, you know, the purchase, the renovation, the management from a property management perspective. And, you know, as you articulated earlier on, like inspections are probably the single largest source of stress and anxiety within the transaction. There's really been no changes in it at all. Um, and, you know, I look back to my first inspection I did back in 2010, I think when I bought my first house. And, you know, the, the end product was this 120 page document that you know, was full of fuzzy photos and disclaimers, but there, there was really no utility for the investor or the owner of that data, right? But if you actually went through it, like, 
it was literally everything that you need to know to manage, renovate, and kind of take care of that home. And so the idea of Inspectify is like, one, one how do we standardize that experience um, to make sure you're getting the most out of it? But also, and more profoundly, how do you start to take that data captured from the inspection to drive more efficiencies, both within the transaction as well as outside the transaction? And so fast forward, you know, 12, 13 years since that first home. And, and here we are with Inspectify doing just that. So that's an awesome story, man. Yeah. And Josh, let me jump in here for our viewers. A, a lot of our folks that are listening to this program are self-directed IRA investors. They're using their IRAs, 401ks, Roth IRAs, other retirement accounts to acquire property. And of course, as an investor myself, I would encourage one to get an inspection. And I know that you know, right now I'm seeing people are buying properties without an inspection. And it, it absolutely baffles me, uh, particularly when buying an investment property. Uh, that's not to discount the the need to get an inspection on, a, on your primary, but particularly when I'm looking at taking my hard earned retirement monies and putting it into an asset class like real estate, I wanna make sure I have an inspection sure. and I understand what to look for. Um, so that being said, Josh, could you touch on the the top maybe maybe two or three mistakes that you see a lot of uh, we'll say maybe newer investors make when acquiring properties with respect to an inspection? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think the first one's fairly obvious, which is they just don't do the inspection, yeah. right? Um, and if, if you think about our platform, like we have a unique opportunity that we work across a pretty broad spectrum of verticals. So if you think about just the investor segment by itself, we work with mom and pop investors. We also work with most of the major institutional REITs that are buying properties across the country. We work, work with builders, we work with a lot of the fractional ownership companies that are coming out. And the reality is the, the big, big dogs that are deploying billions of dollars of capital, they're doing inspections on every single property. Right. And, and you have, you know, local investors that say, oh, I, I'm, I know the property. I don't need to do, I don't need to pay somebody to go walk through it. Right. And so that's the, the first one. Right. And, and, and look at what the, the big institutionals, the publicly traded you know, funds are doing. Like they're doing inspections every single property. And there's a reason for it. Right. Because, yeah, you might spend, you know, three, four or five hundred dollars, depending on your market in, in the home on the inspection. But if you do it right that will not only potentially save you thousands of dollars of, of repairs and, and, and miss, miss things down the road, but also, you know, especially with these larger funds are doing is like that data is really valuable, right? Like it helps you in the, in the scoping process and it helps you in the overall like management of that property, right? If you do an inspection through Inspectify, we're going to capture the make model serial number of every client in the home, right? So if you think about how, the maintenance goes on with that property, like that data becomes much, much more viable. So number one is just don't avoid the inspection. Um, and, and and another caveat to that is, you know, obviously I'm biased because my business is built upon this, but you know, there is a very big difference between having a licensed inspector walk the property or having your general contractor walk the property, yep. right? Um, the, the big one is there's, maliciously or not maliciously there is a conflict of interest there right that general contractor is making their money on the renovations repairs being made and so they may call out things that you know maybe maybe they're an aesthetic issue but they're perfectly functioning that they should repair and so a good licensed inspector is like switzerland it's this neutral third party that's going to you know, not have any skin in the game any 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 kind of back channel to tell you exactly the true condition of the home and when you're making you know millions of dollars of decisions of, of, of assets, you want to have good data. You want to be able to, 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 to make a good um, decision upon that. And and that kind of leads into what I'd say is the second more um, uh, big mistake we see folks is, which is really underestimating the costs of these repairs, right? And so you might have, uh, you might end up paying for an inspection, but if you don't actually understand, okay, if you've got knob and tube wiring throughout the entire house, what does that cost to, to remedy that in this zip code? Um, so ensuring that you're actually using the inspection um, and the data from it to make a better decision versus just following the, the motion, right? Like a lot of folks see the inspection sometimes as a checkbox. Like I just need to do this, but make sure you're making the most of it, right? Because one, you're investing time, you're investing money into it. And that data being captured is extremely valuable in helping you know feed into your different models from you know, either a performa, a yield, whatever your metrics are. Um, and then the last one I'd say, and it, it kind of is the opposite of what I've said before, is we have some some uh, investors that are on the opposite spectrum 
that spend too much on inspections. And what I mean by that is Great one, there, one is delay that inspection cost as far down the funnel as possible, right? Um, when you're looking at, you know, if you haven't written a contract yet, don't spend money on inspection. Wait till you get at least initial PNS purchase and sale agreement. Um, delay that th that cost down the funnel as fast as possible because, you know, if you're converting 50% of the time on your deals and you're spending $400 inspection, your inspection cost is actually $800, right? Because it's taking twice as many deals to actually to go through. So um, you want to delay that as much as possible. But then also, you know, we have some investors come in um, on our platform and they they request a home inspection, they request a, a mold, a, a, a sewer, a roof, a, a foundation. They, they say, oh, I just need to inspect everything. And the reality is a good general um, home inspection is a good filtering process for all those specialty inspections, right? So if, if we come in and we notice a, a massive issue with the foundation, okay, put the investment into getting a specialist in to take a look at it. Um, but, you know, you want to have inspections work for you, not against you, I always like to say. And, and it starts with, you know, knowing what you're ordering, know, how, knowing how that fits the unique property um, and not overspending um, and delaying that as much as possible so you're not, you know, having a racking up a huge amount on your inspection costs. So those are the big ones that, that we see um, kind of in the position that we sit. Awesome, Josh. Thank you. Listen, let me preface my question with letting you know that we've got investors that are not only buying in their backyard or in their county or metropolitan area. We got a lot of folks that are stepping outside of their state and buying opportunities in other states. So when you when I think about what you are working f towards every day, the scalability, you're trying to essentially scale the inspection process and try to have uniformity as well as uh, quality. I imagine you're trying to get great quality. How do you guarantee that with Inspectify that your inspectors are adhering to a certain level and yet it's the same systems across the board because I think that you could really solve uh, an amazing problem for our investors that have never bought and sold in Memphis or Las Vegas and they need, they don't know an inspector, you know? Yeah, it's, it, it's a great question. And, and, you know, I always like to give the story that if you, if you inspect the same house five times with five different inspectors, you will get five completely different reports. Exactly. And the reason for that is the fragmentation in the space, right? There's 30 to 40,000 sole proprietors that make up the licensed inspection, inspector industry. And then you add on, you know, contractors that are just doing the side and it, it gets even worse. And because they're made up of sole proprietors, because there's an infinite amount of different tools they use to complete these reports, ranging from pen and paper to some mobile software, you know, it's really hard to get consistency. And so the way that we've approached it with Inspectify is, is one, we've built, you know, the largest network of licensed inspectors in the US. We have about 50% of all licensed inspectors on our software, on our platform today, um, which gives us scale. Like to your point, if, if you want to start buying homes in different MSAs, it's a click of a button, we can start to support that. Um, but more profoundly on the on the QA, QC perspective, inspectors are required to use our software um, to be on our platform. And so what, what that enables is if you inspect the same home five times, the five different inspectors, you get one report, you get one output because the what they're checking, what they're looking for is standardized, right? It, one of the early inspections I did um, as an investor, it was in it was in Somerville, Massachusetts, just outside of Boston. And you know, my inspector showed up without a ladder. He didn't actually, that wasn't part of his normal process was inspecting the roof. Wow. And, and, you know, because this, you know, lack of standardization, lack, lack of regulation, it's hard to know what you're getting out of it. Right. So, you know, the standardization that a software can provide is, 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 is pretty critical. Um, but also going back to the value of data, right. Imagine that for every single home that you inspect, the data set is standardized and it's accessible, right. We have a lot of our, um, you know, more polished investors are using our APIs to pull that data into their system um, to be able to make decisions better, faster, but also have that data move on with the property over the life cycle of that property. Can you give an example of, uh, I saw that on your website and I'm, I'm just intrigued by it. Of So like, give me some data points that investor would want to under API feed in. And I would imagine that at scale, again, you know, your iBuyers are doing this at a, uh, at a very, very high level, but are they literally looking at, up? Oh, the dishwasher is four years old and the washing machine is here, and if appliances that are X number of years too old, we're, we're not moving forward, or how does that work? Yeah, so if you think about, there's a couple different use cases. The mo ones are most common is when inspectors are doing 
um, reports on our platform, we have standardized the deficiencies that are called out, which are basically the, the defects found around the home. And each of those defects have a different risk factor. Right, in terms of costs, but also complexity and, 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 and uh, just overall how that goes into the workflow of, of renovating and managing that property. And we have a lot of our partners that will filter the, the decision to purchase or not to purchase the home based on those deficiencies, right? So if, if a horizontal crack um, deficiency shows up, which is standardized on our platform, it's an automatically red light. This is not, this doesn't fit with our buy box, we're gonna move on, yeah. right? And so it removes the, the human capital required sure. to underwrite properties um, just based off the fact that you know that data is standardized coming in, right? And so that's a very tactical way within the transaction that the data is being used programmatically. Um, the one that's that's uh, you know more longer term and you articulated um, there in, in your question is, you know, the think of the inspection not only as as an opportunity to understand the condition, but it's a cataloging opportunity as well, right? Where you're actually defining everything that's in the home and that data can move on over the life cycle of that property. And so, you know, we have partners that are pulling in the make, model, and serial number of all the various appliances. And based upon that, we know recall records, we know how many years are left, and you can really start to forecast your maintenance cost based upon that, right? If we know that the appliance package was installed two years ago, um, you've still got a, another year or two of manufacturer warranty, and you shouldn't expect any maintenance costs over the next couple of years, so you can factor into your pro forma. If the appliances are halfway through the life or three quarters of the way through the life, expect some maintenance to come from that. Um, and so this allows you to be more, you know, uh, more diligent or, or the way you manage your properties. Like it, it, it's, it's, it's funny. I was talking to another, a large institutional investor a couple of weeks ago and who came from multifamily. And so in multifamily space, you know, because this has been run as a business for decades and decades of time, they've got their costs down to, okay, I know this building in four years is getting a new roof. I've already got the, the capital allocated. Like it's that yep. diligent in terms of how they do it. Single family has really been new in the last since the financial crisis, right? It's it's a new, it's still in its infancy in terms of of, of of a segment as a vertical as 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 an investment vehicle. And so you have folks that have tens and thousands of twenties and thousands of doors that don't really know what maintenance costs they're going to have next year, right? And so that data is is the first step towards how you can start to be better predictive, have better predictive analytics around when you should expect to spend capital um, on that property based off the unique risk profile of that property. So I, I love uh, it's a little bit in the weeds, but a no, 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 it's it's actually there. really good. And I, I mean, I know I've got my questions here, but you're you're taking me down a rabbit hole because you said it's the baseline or the foundation, and I see as uh, it's it's like the you're introducing a cataloging for a world where like these platforms offer like the internet of things. So all of a sudden here where you're seeing in real time, you know, that washing machine has been used and it's on its 32nd hundred cycle and that has depreciated the value of so forth and you got X number, like you're literally putting the groundwork in to do that across the country, which is, I'm a, I'm a huge fan because that's, call it 20 years from now, that stuff will be there. You know, everybody looks at me and says I'm crazy. But Josh and his team are cataloging all that stuff. And that's that's a note. Man, I'm blown away by that. I'd love to talk to you more about it. I see exactly how the Internet of Things and blockchain all tie together. Conversation for a different day. Yeah, well, it, it's. I'm glad you brought that up, James. You know, um, it, probably a great conversation in terms of, you know, additional business ideas. You know, as folks are out there, their wheels are probably turning if they're in the, you know, private private equity space thinking this is going to be a you know major opportunity down the pipeline. But uh, one thing that I wanted to touch on as an investor, when I get my inspection report, that helps me, of course, uh, build my, 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 what my concessions are going to be, right? So as an investor, I get my, my inspection report and then I'm going to go back to my seller and sure. I'm going to, at that point, start to negotiate and have the conversations with respect to, to concessions, especially the types of houses that that we buy, you know, generally these are homes that were built prior to the 1970s, and so many of these homes have you know old uh, knob and tube wiring. Josh mentioned that before, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Uh, many of these homes have been upgraded uh, since then, uh, but obviously you're still going to have a lot of the legacy mechanical systems, right? So your plumbing some of your electrical, you're still gonna have legacy systems in there. 
And those are the real important ones because those are the, uh, I know you like to call them ghosts, ghosts and goblins. Ghosts and goblins or, on yeah, the properties, yeah. Um, and, and these are the things that can really catch you off guard. Um, I can say I, I've personally bought homes and, and didn't get an inspection. And uh, next thing you know, I got a $750 plumbing bill for this. And then I have another $800 plumbing bill to snake out the main sanitary drain. You know, so I have all of these things that I could have caught on the front end of the transaction doesn't mean I'm not gonna execute on the deal. And in many cases, I'm still gonna execute on the property, but I'm gonna make sure that my principal is preserved and I'm gonna build that into, into my concessions. So I kind of turned this around, Josh, I, I'd love for maybe if you could give us an idea of what is the output um, using, using the Inspectify solution, what does that output look like and how can an investor, and I love that you're an investor yourself, um, you, you know, somebody that comes on the show that is not only offering a software program and offering the connectivity, but somebody that actually was is an investor themselves and has done over 50 houses. He's in the trenches. I, I, yeah, I think that's yeah. absolutely huge. So I, I really appreciate that. So maybe, Josh, if you could talk to us a little bit about what that output looks like and uh, and how investors could use that in a practical sense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think the first thing to start with is when when I've done inspections over the last 10 years as an investor, you know, inspectors typically do inspections for consumers, right? And so the report that you get as an investor doesn't have as much utility as I mentioned before. Like it, it's got all this stuff about, well, this is what a dishwasher does. This is how a dishwasher works. It's like, you're an investor, you understand that, but it's it's more tailored for a first time home buyer. And so what we've uncovered and what we've built here in Spectify is we've realized that what a first time home buyer needs from a home inspection compared to a savvy real estate investor are two very different inspections, right? And so we have, we start with, uh, a base template that's built for investors that's used by individual mom and pops all the way up to the largest reach that are buying homes across the country. And so the data set you're getting is more direct. It's more to the point um, for folks that understand properties better than, you know, a first time home buyer. Um, and so, you know, you're getting more succinct information to, to start with, right? The other thing I'll mention from a technology perspective is the report is completely digital, right? Like, you know, my first report I did um, in 2010 was literally a written copy. Like I was given this 120 page document at the end of the inspection. Um, and we still allow folks to export a PDF, but you know, our, our reports are online, they're digital. You can use a nav bar and move things through quickly. Um, there's enhanced data that comes within that. So it allows you to navigate quicker um, and be able to make a decision quicker. Um, the other part going into the cost side. So if you think about what, if a savvy inspector does an inspection, what is the first thing they do after they get that inspection? They're going to scope repairs, understand what's the cost to fix those repairs. So I can put that in my pro forma and understand how, what my total um, cost in for this property is. And so, you know, I, my wife and I doing our real estate investments, we would just do it on a spreadsheet, right? We would do this inspection and then we'd have kind of our own kind of baked in pricing and we would build this model to understand the overall cost. And so that was a pain point that we had because it was literally living in Excel and it took us a couple hours to do this out a day. And so with the Inspectify platform, we automate that. You get an inspection through Inspectify, we're gonna give you cost data on all the things that were found that by the inspector, um, by those standard deficiencies. But we also have a new product that we've been rolling out in beta in the last month that allows investors to build scopes directly on top of the report. And so it removes you from being in that, that Excel and doing the transformation between a PDF and a written document and a Microsoft Excel and puts everything on one platform, allows you to build the scope as you need. And then be able to use that as a negotiation tactic if you're going to work with the seller to get concessions or collaborate with your contractors to get the work started, right? So it's all about creating efficiency in that data versus having it siloed in the PDF. Um, so that's what makes our reports and really our, our experience, if you will. It's more than a report. It's more of a portal that you can interact with just significantly different than what you get from normal inspections. I think it's also important to note because uh, what Josh just said was, was excellent. But literally, if you've never ordered an inspection online before and you're used to just going to the yellow pages, let's just say, you could literally go to inspectify.com. We did this before the call. Type in an address that's right there on the home screen and in three clicks, you've ordered an inspection. You know exactly how much it is. I mean, it is, it's, it's very simple. And I love the, the idea of being able to manipulate this data uh, 
uh, on the back end, should you choose you want to, right? Um, question I have for you, Josh, is this. We have a lot of investors that have annual tenants, and these tenants turn over um, as usual. And a lot of our investors are not doing inspections once the tenant moves out. And I was just wondering if you can give us, what do you think are the top three mistakes? You may say not doing an inspection. Um, when the tenant moves out and the punch list options and all that stuff, could Inspectify help there as well? Yeah, I mean, that's been, to be honest, it's probably one of our fastest growing verticals we have is we're working with property managers across the country on all the different inspections that happen over the life cycle of a property manager, right? You've got your, your move out inspection as you articulated with the tenant moving out to understand know what damages may be done or what concessions be made from the, the, the deposit uh we have you know rent ready qc inspections so if it, that that move out has been done ensure the work has been done correctly and it's ready to be rent ready and we even have and this is something that we're seeing more and more property managers do which selfishly helps our business so i'm gonna obviously sound a bit of a, like a hypocrite saying that everybody should do it but we're seeing more and more inspections happening mid-lease Mm -hmm. um, and for the main reason of saying, hey, we don't want to wait until that tenant moves out to fix a water heater that have, has already destroy, destroyed um, drywall and has mold. But let's try to catch that stuff proactively to lower our, our P&L from a maintenance perspective. And so, you know, I, I, the, the first you know, mistake, again, you, you kind of articulated, but, you know, a lot of smaller mom and pop PMs aren't really doing inspections at all. Right. Um, and you take a deposit for a reason and not that you should use that to just increase your, your profitability. Like if, if the tenant took good care of the property, like they shouldn't be taken being penalized for that. But if they put holes in the wall, if they, you know, if the appliances got destroyed, like you should be holding them accountable for that. An inspection at move out is one of the best ways to do that. Right. And, and by having to be a third party neutral inspector, there's no, you know, no qualms around conflict of interest. Right. The challenge of, of, you know, having the tenant do it or having your having you know your superintendent do it is like there's always this potential conflict like who's actually telling the truth here right by having a third party go in there it's like again there's no we're, we're switzerland here with this neutral third party we have no skin in the game uh, we just want to tell you the facts and the data around the property and then you make a decision based upon that um and because that's a far lighter inspection it's far more price competitive too right so it's not like you're spending three to four or five hundred dollars on those inspections they're you know significantly cheaper because it's a lighter inspection so number one is just using it where applicable um, to be able to, to cover your risk um, and, and, and make sure that you're, you're managing your properties you know, correctly. Um, I think outside of that, it's, it, it's pretty similar to like the acquisition. It's like making sure you're using the data. If you're doing an inspection, like make sure you're getting costs out of it. Make sure you're, you're getting actions taken out of that. Um, and then, you know, the third one, and again, I, I'm a bit of a hypocrite from saying this, but like, there is actually a ton of value from doing inspections mid lease. Like there, we're seeing more and more funds do this um, because you know it's it, it, it's a classic adage that you don't really you don't really see the value of preventive maintenance until it's too late, right? Well, folks have seen it enough that they're starting to try to prevent that as much as possible, right? So um, doing inspections mid lease, and you know those are ones where maybe it's more useful to have the tenant do it, right? Using you know Inspectify self inspect app to have a tenant go and capture images um, to um, to understand that it's all about managing the risk and ensuring that you know your your those units are profitable. And you're not spending all your profits on you know wear and tear to the property. I want to uh, make an assumption here that in the inspection side of the business, Josh has access to unique information. And I just don't mean about, you know, the quality and the shape of a property. But, you know, kind of the theme of season two of the Building Equity podcast is, is the market collapsing or is it correcting? Mm -hmm. Right, and you heard Josh mention Inspectify is working with REITs. I imagine that's invitation homes. I imagine that's you know American homes for rent. Uh, the build for rent craze is is going wild. Housing starts are plummeting. Um, do you have a unique perspective when you see? Uh, you obviously get an order at contract, right? And then yep. usually a transaction cancels, you know, after the inspection. But where, where do you see the market presently or what, what are you looking into for 2023? Yeah, it's uh, it's a great question. And I, and I think part of it is we still don't 
no, right? I, I, I still, I mean, like we saw the inflation numbers that came out last week. Like we should expect at least another three quarters basis hike um, here when the when the Fed does the next meeting. So I don't think we're at the the equilibrium. I'm not going to say bottom. We're not at equilibrium yet. Right. And so until we get to equilibrium, I think uh, it's hard to say exactly when things are going to change. I will tell you some segments are doing better. Some are doing worse. Right. We're in a unique position that we work across, the pre, as I mentioned, pretty broad spectrum. Like we work with consumers and agents on the normal harm purchase. We work with power buyers and I buyers. We work with REITs, individual investors, property managers, lenders, insurance carriers. And so we, we, we have a bit of a global view on how everything's doing. And and I can tell you the consumer side is it's it's tough, right? It, it, that one is is you know it's in the day like interest rates have more than doubled in the last six months. So um, you know buying power has been significantly reduced. And until you see sellers adjust to this new norm in terms of like the willingness to sell, uh, we're going to be in a bit of an awkward period there. Um, and I think that's just, it's going to be the normal. Something similar with investors as well. I mean, I, I a lot of our funds are telling us that Q4 is going to be a big quarter, but you know, it, it, it's a classic adage that you don't want to catch a falling knife either, right? And yep. so until we hit that equilibrium, like you're not going to see a lot of funds jump in. But there's this. I was talking to another founder in in, in this space a couple months ago, and I think it's it's interesting that we're we're in a in a point of time that we've never been in before. Whereas you have an unprecedented amount of capital sitting on the sidelines to buy single family assets, right? Like more than ever before. And they're all, because they're rigorous, because they're good operators, they all don't want to catch this fall night, right? But the reality is once we see a point of equilibrium, like you're going to see a frenzy because you have all this capital that's just waiting to get deployed. We know single family is continues to be one of the best asset classes out there to invest in. So it's not like there's a willingness not to invest, not to invest. It's they want to deploy capital. They want to put it somewhere. But, you know, if you can wait a month and get a better deal, you know, just just wait. Like So I I think it's going to be. I like to tell folks it's going to be awkward the next six months. It's going to be lumpy and awkward. Like we're going to see some funds pick up, some drop off. Um, and I think uh, investor classes will, I don't think we'll see, you know, some point of rebalancing or rebuilding where we were until, you know, late Q1, early Q2 of next year. That's kind of the, the Josh Jensen forecast. If, if you had to put one, I think there's, I saw a really good report. Um, I forgot who put it out, but uh, or not a report. It was, it was an article about how, you know, the, the 2008 financial crisis really spurred and started the SFR segment, right? Like that's when Invitation and Starwood, everybody started, the, like that's when the initial momentum um, came was from the, the financial crisis. And, you know, the article went to say, hey, we don't think that's actually going to happen with this new downturn that we're seeing where you know, home prices are going to come down. Like, yeah, there's probably going to be some foreclosures coming, but you know, it, it's not going to be the same. But what will probably be another boom is going to be in that you articulated it's going to be built to rent, right? Because you're seeing the same thing with builders having these, this, this large amount of inventory sitting there that needs to be purchased by someone. And so, you know, I can tell you, and we're, we've got firsthand experience because we work with a lot of folks doing build to rent, um, but that space is still just as busy as it's ever been, right? If not busier. So I think that segment will grow, you know, continue to be you know, pretty healthy over the next six months um, while we see softness in the SFR side. Um, but then the other thing, and I mentioned this, if you've got property managers, like you've had this huge, like basically bull market where people have bull market in terms of people buying SFR homes and they've acquired this massive inventory. And now like the dust has settled. And it's like, crap, you've got to manage all these homes, right? And so we're seeing more and more property managers partner with us uh, to be able to better manage that asset class that they've kind of built up over the last two years. But now they're starting to put the operational rigor in place to, to extract as much value out of them as much as possible. So those are some, this kind of cliff notes of what, what we're seeing. Um, like I said, we're, we're projecting it to be Awkward is the best way to put it for the next, you know, six to six to eight months. Um, but I think we're close to that point of equilibrium. Um, my hope is Q1, Q2 of next year is it will be in much better shape. So well, that's my two cents. Well, well said, Josh. Thank you. And I'm going to ask one more question. If you don't like it, we'll take it out. We'll edit it out. But I've just got to ask while I got you because my brain is going nuts thinking about it. So the way that you're collecting the data from the inspection. You guys have the opportunity, and you probably already know this, to fundamentally change 
the actual walkthrough, right? I mean, are you, have you identified that opportunity yet where you have the data of the home, all the appliances and the roof age and all that stuff. Now, essentially, you've got a listing and that listing could have all of that metadata associated with it. And now you've fundamentally changed what it's like to do a walkthrough. My, when you say when you say walkthrough, you mean like a tour? I mean, yeah, yeah, the initial tour, yeah, yeah not not the yeah. ending walkthrough, but the initial tour, yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I think the modern real estate transaction to me, like to me, the perfect real estate transaction, the perfect listing, is one where a home comes pre-inspected, and this idea of this negotiation that happens after the fact, after you've already got under agreement, yep. gets completely removed, right? And so the reason why you haven't seen that before is because inspections has always been this roll of the dice, right? You just don't know, you, you, you get, you're gonna get inspection one out of five or you're inspection five out of five. You just don't know what the experience is gonna be. And so a lot of what we're working towards, and I, I think we're making good headway in the investor community, is creating kind of that gold standard for the inspection, right? Um, and so, like, we, you know, a lot of a lot of funds will see the hummingbird, which is our, our logo, and they're like, okay, we can trust this. Like, Inspectify, they don't they don't do repairs, they don't they don't you know sell sell insurance and all this stuff. Like, they're just an inspection platform, right? So, like, we can trust this data for our diligence. And so, if you can start to create that mechanism in the MLS world as well, where you know agents, buyers, sellers can trust the data set, you can imagine a world that you know. A buyer shows up to one through one two three Main Street. They have not only all the conditional data; they have the catalog data of that home, and can make one informed decision. You lock on price, and you move towards closing. Right? And you remove this like negotiation that happens on the back end. Um, I also think there's more efficiency gains from that data as well. Sure. Right? So a cool thing that we're doing now is we take that ins- we can take the inspection data set we capture. And we can output a GSC compliant data set for a desktop appraisal. And so now if you do an inspection through Inspectify, you can appraise a home in literally 48 hours oh, because we already have all the data. So right? cool. And so, and so imagine that on the listing. Imagine that the home's already been inspected at listing. There's only one component you're missing from the appraisal, which is the purchase price. So everything, all the other comps, everything else can be pulled. So as soon as that PNS is accepted, the home's priced effectively, right? So not that we, you know, people want to close on homes instantly, but you remove all the uncertainty. It's not about making the, the closing process from 30 days down to 30 seconds. It's about how do you remove the unknown, the risk, the uncertainty from the seller and the buyer instantly, right? And I think this data is a good first step towards enabling that almost near certainty a transaction. A hundred percent agree. Uh, awesome. Well said. Josh, thank you so much for joining us here on the Building Equity Podcast. Uh, it's, you know, John, when we started the show, we said we wanted to bring the best of the best in the industry to our real estate investors. And yeah. here on a subject that some would say, inspections, nobody cares about that. Well, let me just tell you, Josh Jensen does, and he's revolutionizing it. You're absolutely right, James. And Josh, thank, thank you so much for being on the, on the show. And again, I got to say one more time, you know, coming from a real investor practitioner to building this company, um, very, very important for our audience to know uh, the the background there. And I want to make sure I mention before we conclude here that investing in in single family residential properties as a as an individual mom and pop investor, as I am, as many of the people that are part of my tribe are we have to look at ways to maintain whatever it is that we do nine to five, right? Because most of us are are nine to five, we have a job, and then we're part-time real estate investors. And we have to find, so that we can live the lifestyle that we want, we have to find ways to automate and add efficiencies in our part-time real estate investing business. And this is one great example, Inspectify is one great example of how to create that that automation. Now, the way I used to automate it was I just didn't get an inspection. Yep. <laughs> right. And uh, but I, I learned the hard way, along with a lot of the other folks that I've worked with over the years have learned the hard way. So this is this is one great component of it's really important that we get an inspection on every single property that we acquire, no matter what. And Inspectify makes it obviously very easy for us to do that. Now, the next part of the process, we can talk about, okay, we're going to use our, let's say, self-directed IRA to to buy a property. How do we create 
automation in that process. Well, now we have IRA Title Pro. So someone can go to iratitlepro.com. They can fill out the easy fill form. They can even, I think, James, you can speak to this a little bit more. I think you have a chat feature that allows someone to go in and actually chat with an agent. Yeah, I see a real and opportunity and synergy of trying to bring the inspection process into the closing process of what we're offering to, to their folks and to do it seamlessly. Right. Uh, so I'm going to dig a little bit deeper into it where it's not rocket science to be able to, you know, tee up an inspection to somebody that wants it right at that moment. Um, what... I'm cutting off your thought, John Bowens, not because I, I, I don't like you, I cherish the time that we spend together, but I know we're, we're short with Josh. Um, Josh, do you know why I believe that every listing will have an inspection? And I would say it's in five years or less, and it's proven, this is a proven model, why it will happen at listing. Because during the um, buildup to 05, 06, when everybody was refinancing their homes and cashing out, the first thing that they had to do to start that process was give their credit card number for 500 bucks for an appraisal. And appraisals didn't come back sometimes, sometimes they did. But that homeowner was accustomed and had no problem putting forth that 500 bucks to get that appraisal. And they did it by the millions, right? To where now it's just a slight little difference and say, hey, do you want to remove the inspection contingency? Do you want to have complete transparency in the deal? Do you want to be able to cut 15 days on average of your closing costs and no back and forth of, oh, by the way, the AC is three years old. I want to take $2,000 off. As everybody knows, you can have an inspection done at listing and they will happily hand over their credit card number because of what I just said. That's my, my final thought. I agree with you. I think that's where we're going. So um, it's exciting times. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Josh. John Bowens, we did it again. I can't wait for the next one. Yeah, thank you again, Josh. Really appreciate you joining the show today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Take care. Appreciate Have a wonderful it. day, all right? You guys too. Cheers. John Bowens, we just had Josh Jensen on here. Unbelievable interview. So glad that we we're able to take something. Everybody, I say everybody, most people look at me and they're like, why do you care so much about something as boring as title insurance you know, and a title policy? I'm like, what's my thing? And here's a guy that's revolutionizing the inspection process and not just, you know, a, a property inspection, but what are you going to do with the data afterwards? And how are you going to use that to make better informed decisions in an in investor's buy box? All of that is mind blowing. I'm so glad we were able to get him on the show. Yeah. And James, I'll say it's, it's important for investors, especially those that are just getting started to understand the whole process of acquiring a property. And we're here to make it easy for the investors to go through the entire process from the property purchase contract, through the inspection, through using their IRA to close through IRA title company, for example, should they choose to use those services, through maintaining the property, paying for expenses, and then eventually harvesting their profit eventually when they sell the property or as they have rental income that builds up in that account. So it's all about creating a lot of efficiency. And I think Josh brought to the table a system that can help in that efficiency quest from an inspection perspective. I'll also mention and encourage visitors here that are doing their very first deal to when they order an inspection to actually show up at the inspection. Sure and actually walk with the inspector through the inspection process. You would be surprised. Some inspectors aren't gonna want you to look over their shoulder, but you gotta remember that you are paying them for that inspection. In my experience, most will you, as long as you give them a little bit of space, most are willing to allow you to go through the property with them. And you as the client, they are happy to talk you through what's going on with that property. Excellent point. What are the things that they're looking at? And that helps educate you on what they're looking for. That doesn't mean you disintermediate the inspector and on future properties, you don't get an inspection because you think you're now a professional sure. after you've walked through one, right, one, um, one property inspection. But it gets you a feel for what inspectors look for. So as you're buying and selling real estate, you can walk through a property and get a good idea from an observation perspective what you need to go a little bit deeper on. And then you hire your inspection and you can kind of anticipate that and already start building that into your pro forma. 
Well, I tell you what, I feel like we hit a home run with Josh and Inspectify. Looking forward to our next guest on the next episode of the Building Equity Podcast. Thank you, John, for doing this with me, man. Thank you, James.